Very good evening. I am Shilpa and I welcome you all to the NCERT live phone in program. Today we will understand effect of climate change on the various forms of water like snow, glacier, etc. And to discuss this topic in our studio we have Dr. C. V. Shimre, an associate professor at the Department of Education in Science and Mathematics in NCERT. I welcome you Dr. Shimri. Thank you. Dr. Shimri, certainly you have chosen a topic which is very important for us to discuss. Mm -hmm. But still, why did you choose this topic? Well, uh, yes, this is indeed a very important topic. It is related to climate change. And kids and everyone of, uh, ev each one of us hear a lot about climate change, read a lot about climate change, and uh, even politicians and everybody is talking about climate change and often we come across different words that is used for example sometimes they use iceberg sometimes they use ice sheet sometimes they use sea ice or sometimes they use different forms of water and so but then we don't really pay attention to those words when we read or we hear but if we look closely into those words we'll find that these words are very important in the context of climate change because it decides or impact climate change and it is in turn impacted by climate change and that that is the reason that I chose this topic and it is very important for students to understand climate change uh, and also understand this word so that they can better understand climate change and that's the reason I chose this topic. Right. But like you mentioned that we have the several forms of water and you also mentioned about the ice sheet, snow, ice. So what's the basic difference of it? Yes, they are very different in the sense that, of course, they are all forms of water, mm -hmm. uh, but they are very different in the sense that, and so we need to understand the differences. And so today we will be discussing about these differences. Before we get into these differences, uh, first it is important for us to understand what uh, cryosphere is. So let's, uh, let's, let's see the slide uh, to just to understand the definition of cr cryosphere. So if you look into the slide, it says that Cryosphere is nothing but a frozen places of the earth in the form of ice or snow. Mm -hmm. And so any place on earth which is frozen, which is in the form of ice or snow, is known as cryosphere. And these are mainly found in polar regions, that is the uh, Arctic region, the Antarctic region. Mm -hmm. But not only there, we also find this cryosphere in different parts of the world, also in the equatorial region, wherever there is high altitude. And so it is very important that uh, we understand this word cryosphere itself before we get into uh, the definitions or the differences between the different forms of uh, water, for example, iceberg, ice sheets, and as we said. And if you look at the slide again, you can find the definition. It explains uh, what are the factors that is there. So cryosphere is also the habitat of people, plants, and animals. It says that. And so that means that these are the places. It is not just water forms. These are places where organisms live. And these are the places which sustain different organisms. It provides livelihood to some people. For example, people living in the polar regions, the Arctic regions, they, de they are so much dependent on the living organisms that is living in those cryosphere. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so it's so very important to understand what cryosphere is. And if we uh, further look into the definition of snow, uh, let us look at the slide, for example, like I, I have listed down the properties of snow. So what is snow? Snow is nothing but again precipitation made up of ice crystals and what is the condition to have snow? Mm -hmm. The conditions are it has to be uh, we have we need to have a very cold temperature and then other factor that is important is it has we have to have high humidity. Okay. When these two factors come together then there is possibility of formation of snow crystals or snowflakes and these are very light they are not compact they are not solid as such as like ice but they are light and we can if we touch it then it is really soft and so snow again it plays a very important role uh, snow provides us water for example melting of snow provides us fresh water on which many uh, states or many countries are dependent on that uh, for example, let's just take an example of the Hindu Kush uh, Himalaya region, which constitutes of uh, seven different countries, for example, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, 
uh, Afghanistan and China and so on. So these are the countries which are dependent on the melting of the snow, I would say, in one sense. And so it's very important, again, that we have enough snow in those areas so that these people will not be deprived of their fresh water. Mm -hmm. And if we go back to the slide again, we have some more properties of the uh, snow again. So it provides, again, habitat for some animals and plants. As I said, it, uh, uh, it, 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 it's like a, it's a source of water. And besides that, snow is very important in the context of climate change because snow, as you know, it is white and there is something called albedo effect when we are talking about climate change. And albedo effect is nothing but uh, it's about the absorption of uh, solar radiation by objects. And so snow, since it is white, it tends to absorb more solar radiation. Uh, I mean, it tends to reflect more solar radiation. And so lower the albedo, that means that uh, it absorbs more solar radiation, higher the albedo, then it reflects more solar radiation. Since snow reflects more solar radiation, it cools the temperature below. Otherwise, what happens is if it absorbs more solar radiation, snow will melt definitely, and also the temperature around that place will be warmer. And so, again, snow is a very important uh, component when we talk about climate change, and uh, that's the reason that we're discussing about snow here. And next, if we go to, uh, if we look at the slide, ice. So ice is again very common for us, like uh, nowadays almost every household that has ice in their homes, for example, the f refrigerators and all, they make ice, you know. And we know that refrigerator produces, we get ice from the freezer because the temperature there is really low. Uh, and that's how you get the ice. And if you look into uh, the properties of ice, if you can see at the slide, then it tells you that it is like, uh, it, it's a, let, let me just read out, ice forms when temperatures drop below the freezing point and liquid water becomes a solid, creating a tightly bonded substances. And so if you uh, go back to the snow definition, it is light, you know, as I said, but ice, it is solid. And so uh, it is hard. And ice we get from our fridge, but they are naturally occurring ice. For example, you get a lot of ice, uh, uh, they're naturally occurring ice in the polar regions in the form of glaciers, in the form of sea ice. And so there are uh, different forms of, again, uh, ice which are occurring naturally, which are not man-made like the ice that we get from the fridge. Mm -hmm. And this, again, this ice which are occurring naturally, it's very important again. Again, albedo effect comes into play. Uh, it tends to reflect more sunlight. B uh, because it is white, it is lighter in color, and again, it is a habitat for different organisms. Uh, as you can see in the slide, it also provides water for people, animals, and plants. So there are different uh, fact, I mean, properties of ice which are important in this in terms of our livelihood or the lively uh, livelihood of organisms or even in terms of climate change, because as I said, I see ice tend to reflect more sunlight. And what will happen if climate is warming? The, uh, I mean, there is global warming. If there is increase in temperature, what happens is the sea ice will melt. And when sea ice melts, what happens is, let's assume that all the sea ice melts completely. Then it becomes water, liquid water. And the liquid water tends to absorb more sunlight. Mm -hmm. And what happens if it absorbs more sunlight is then it becomes warmer. And there are so many other effects uh, that happens because it is warm, because of the warming water. And it's very important to understand the characteristics or the properties of sea ice. So you can see some of the, in the fi uh, picture uh, here in the slide, you can see some of the uh, ice which you get in. This is a floating ice in Lake Superior. Uh, this is again a floating uh, ice in Lake Superior. These are more a bigger size ice. And this is a river, it's like, it's a ice, a hard ice, uh, frozen river. So in colder temperatures, water forms and water bodies can really, f I mean, get different forms, like it can turn into solid ice. It will be so hard that you can just drive your cars on that or you can do everything you can play on that and in fact yeah there are so many kids so, so many people living uh, on the banks of the rivers where you have these frozen rivers they do play they can do whatever they want because the ice is so hard and so solid there and so thick 
uh, but people are very careful because uh, because of warming climate again, warming earth again, what happens is there is not so much ice that is formed on the rivers. And so it, it gets thinner. And so when it is thin, then uh, there is a danger of like, you know, sinking of the ice. And so people tend to avoid that as well. But wherever it's still very cold and it, the ice is very thick, people can still, uh, I mean, walk around, move around on the uh, ice sheet or on the frozen ice and things like that. And Dr. Yes. Shimri, you just uh, told us about uh, various forms of uh, water like ice and uh, sea ice you were just mentioning about it. But how a child could actually differentiate between snow and ice just by looking at it? Because well, they do use these terms simultaneously. Yes. So, uh, we have, uh, I have given you the differences between uh, what a snow is and what ice is. By looking you feel that snow is like uh, it is fluffy when you look at it, it is fluffy, it is light, it, it feels like that you can blow and it will just, I mean, move, you know, fly, like, indeed you can do that if the ice or snow is really light. Uh, but ice is hard. They all know what ice is like. We eat uh, all those candies, uh, ice mm -hmm. candies, and so they know how hard it is. But if you look at it also, you know that I it's going to feel hard. But for snow, it is like even at the look of it, you'll, f you'll know that, okay, this is not going to be hard. It's going to be soft and indeed it is soft. But over time, when snow becomes, I mean, old or it settles down, then eventually it turns into ice. Right. And also the uh, two terms, which is uh, sea ice and icebergs, are, are it all same, both the terms? Uh, these are not the same. Uh, and that's the reason we are using different words for that. Mm -hmm. So sea ice is that uh, ice that is floating in the sea. For example, if you look at the slide, uh, it tells you what sea ice is. So it says sea ice forms when water in the ocean is cool to temperature below freezing. And so more sea ice, for, uh, sea ice forms in the Arctic and the Antarctic oceans. That means the Antarctic and Arctic oceans are really cold and that's the reason that the sea, uh, the water in that uh, is frozen and you have ice, sea ice. And so uh, the important factors that uh, points that you need to understand that students need to understand about sea ice is that sea ice since it is formed from the water itself in the ocean, it is not going to raise the sea level. That is very, very important. People misunderstand, so many people misunderstand that, okay, sea ice is melting and so now the sea level is going to rise and which is very, very wrong. And so it's very important for students to understand that melting of sea ice is not going to raise the sea level because the sea ice is formed from the water in the ocean itself. And the other word that you mentioned, icebergs. Iceberg. Hmm. Icebergs are formed uh, in a very different way again. Maybe we can... Uh, go to some slides, for example, yeah, we have a slide there what icebergs are like. So icebergs again, uh, it do not just form, y we have heard about icebergs, students have heard about icebergs, they, have, they know that icebergs are in the ocean, but the origin of icebergs are not ocean. As you can see there uh, in the slide, the, it says that icebergs are chunks of ice that break off glaciers and ice sheets and drift in the oceans. That means that the origin of iceberg is from the glacier or the ice sheet that is formed on land. And so when this, uh, the extension of this ice sheet or the glaciers uh, break off and gets into the ocean, then you have your uh, iceberg. And we can look at the slide and understand some more properties of the uh, iceberg. For example, as I said uh, earlier for the case of sea uh, ice, there is no rise in sea level. But uh, understand this, students need to understand this. Icebergs, when it first fell on uh, the ocean, it will indeed raise sea level. But when it melts, once it is in the ocean, when it melts, it is not going to increase, the s raise the sea level. That's a point which is very, very important again when we talk about icebergs. And as I said, it breaks off uh, from the big chunk of the glacier uh, or, or the sh ice sheet, then it falls into the ocean. And when temperature rises, then it melts and it melts. And 
ultimately after many many years or decades it is going to more it is going to be part of the ocean and you may not even be able to see again icebergs are also important in the sense that it provides shelter for different organisms uh, we can maybe go see this is some pictures of icebergs icebergs are in different shapes for example this is one of those shapes it is called table or uh, iceberg so it's like it looks like a table as you can see in the picture this is another iceberg uh, something like it looks like a dome like and so it has different shapes iceberg can be of different shapes this one uh, though the picture is not very clear uh, this is supposed to be the iceberg that was that had caused the sinking of the titanic the great titanic everyone knows about the titanic so the the titanic uh, was thought to be uh, uh, thought to sink because of its uh, con i mean because it got in contact with that iceberg, iceberg. that we just uh, saw in the slide and so icebergs can be again uh, it's it's it can be dangerous also for ships that's moving around they need to be very careful the ships need to be very careful when they cruise around they travel around but again yeah I it has a lot of connection with climate change so uh, you get I more I uh, melting of icebergs or you get more uh, fall more icebergs because there is carving of uh, calving of uh, this chunk of uh, ice from glaciers or the ice sheets and that's mm -hmm. how you get the icebergs Dr. Shinbe, how does it matter to us? In what form water does exist? So, how does it matter to us? Well, yes, that's a good question. It does matter, and that's the reason that uh, we are discussing all this. As I said, sea ice, when it uh, melts, what happens? It, it, it is like uh, sea ice is a habitat for different organisms. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the polar bear. It, it's so dependent on sea ice. So, the less the sea ice is, the more in 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 danger this uh, animals are going to be right. not just uh, polar bears there are other organisms which live and thrive on sea ice and imagine if the whole all of the sea ice disappear then it's not just those few organism organisms disappearing from the uh, i mean from the oceans but it's about the ocean ecosystem we do not we cannot imagine what could happen because there are so many unstudied areas we still have to explore and uh, understand so many things that's happening around in the ecosystem and so what happens if some some of these organisms disappear from uh, the ocean or in the from the ecosystem uh, how what's the, going to be the impact uh, in the larger ocean ecosystem or aquatic ecosystem and so uh, it's uh, really important that we understand these words and we understand the properties of this uh, different water forms again as i said uh, that's uh, one side uh, of about the iceberg again if we talk about glaciers how important glaciers are we mentioned a few points glaciers uh, we, we can go back to some of the see some of those slides there uh, if i have that so glaciers we can just see the slide and understand more about glaciers so uh, it's the slide says uh, glaciers how do you define glaciers glaciers are thick masses of ice on land the ice has built up for many seasons of snowfall like as i said snowfall snow eventually it becomes ice this ice are the glaciers you know and so uh, and glaciers are not static it moves S but it moves very slowly and glaciers can be of again uh, two types uh, one is a continental glacier that is the ice sheet and the other one is alpine uh, glacier so which uh, we can see some of the pictures uh, we have there see if we see at the slide that's a Greenland where you have this con uh, this ice sheet or the continental uh, glacier so the ho the whole white portion it's ice or glacier so it's called ice sheet this glacier is called also called ice sheet mm -hmm. and ice sheet it is called ice sheet because it is so huge to be called an ice sheet you need to uh, the ice the glacier needs to be of certain size it needs to be really big uh, i don't exactly uh, remember the size but it is more, more it should be more than 30000 square kilometers so that's really huge as you can see in the picture the uh, it almost covered the whole of uh, greenland and so uh, iceberg again uh, i mean glaciers so glaciers how important are they is uh, those are glaciers then we have another form of glaciers alpine glaciers uh, which 
uh, in the initially I told you about Hindu Kush uh, Himalaya, mm -hmm. which provides, which is a source of water from for different places in seven different countries. And so imagine if those glaciers do not r remain anymore. So what's going to be the impact? Uh, you can see at the slide, uh, this picture, we can just look at this picture. So we can see some of the glaciers there. The Seachin Glacier, which is familiar to us. Right. Yes, there are other glaciers as well. So Hindu Kush Himalaya region has several, many, many glaciers. And so, for example, uh, we are familiar with the Gangotri Glacier also, which is not in the picture, uh, but uh, that is also a glacier. And so imagine if all this glacier dries up, what's going to happen is that source of water definitely water, right. uh, will not be there anymore. And there's so many other things that can happen, you know, how it's going to impact the larger climate. So I it's a complicated thing. Uh, I mean, it's complex somewhat to understand the whole uh, science about how exactly the glaciers are mel melting and how fast it is melting. What if the uh, temperature increases this much, how much melting it's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Exact figures is uh, it's difficult to get, and that is the reason it makes uh, understanding climate change very complicated. Uh, and so scientists are really working hard in that sense, and especially a lot of work is happening now in the Hindu Kush region because now that uh, we need to really understand the impact of uh, melting of glaciers in this part uh, of the world, because it's going to impact different several countries. Right. So I'm coming back to the topic, which is uh, forms of water in the context of climate change. So what's the relation between this water forms and climate change? Yes. As I said, uh, I think I have mentioned several times uh -huh. uh, during a discussion that uh, there is something called albedo effect. You know, uh, then there is climate change is all about temperature rise and the impact that it has because of rise in temperature, global temperature, average global temperature. And so what's happening is uh, we have snow, we have ice in different forms like glaciers, icebergs, sea ice, and different forms of water. And so what happens is when there is climate change, that means when there is increase in temperature, all these things are going to melt faster. And how fast it, it is going to melt, uh, exact, again, exact figure, it's difficult to draw, but we have so many scientific, uh, I mean, findings now that yes, because of increase in temperature, so much melting has happened. Not just melting, melting is happening doubly now. So since like tw 2000, since the year 2000. For example, in the Hindu Kush uh, Himalaya region, there is a lot of study going on now. I, uh, many years, bef uh, decades before, it was not so much studied, but now a lot of studies are going on the Hindu Kush Himalaya region, uh, where they're trying to understand if there is increase in this temperature, how much melting is going to happen, how it's going to impact the livelihood, how it's going to impact the rivers, you know, again, because many of the rivers, for example, the Brahmaputra or the uh, famous, the Ganges. So this water, the source is from the glacier. And imagine there is no more glacier. Where do you get the Ganges water from? Of, of course, you'll still get the monsoons. And so there will be some water getting into that. But then the main source, which starts from the glacier, that is a Gangotri glacier, uh, if that disappears, then you can imagine what uh, can happen to Ganges River and people who are dependent on that, you know. Yeah. So uh, the impact is like, it's not just one. It's, it has a series of impact. Uh, and so it, it impacts the climate, impacts the temperature, impacts human beings, impacts rivers, impacts uh, organisms living in the rivers, and so on. Everything so, is yes. Mm. And so so much connection with uh, climate change and this. Uh, and not just that, as I said, it can again impact uh, in reverse way also. And so the, there is more melting than, uh, for example, the sea ice. Let's say all the sea ice melts. So what happens? There, there, there is warming of temperature. And so warming of temperature, again, it will increase more melting, you know. So it, it's a vicious cycle kind of mm -hmm. thing that uh, because of temperature increase, then there will be more melting. More melting means it, it's going to get warmer, you know. Right. So here I'll take one question of Mr. Hitesh who is a class 6 student and we got this question from our social media platform and he's asking about if more more if more water will melt more evaporation will happen and hence more rainfall isn't it good yes uh, that's a very, a very interesting question uh, he is quite right in the sense that if there is more evaporation there will be more rainfall but i will take this uh, i will answer this question uh, in uh, maybe few uh, minutes uh, by getting into the different, for example, because we have talked about mm, 
glaciers we have talked about uh, ice sea ice you mm -hmm. know because the impact of those two are very different so what will happen if all the sea ice melts so it's all going to become water a part of the ocean and it's going to get warmer mm. if it gets warmer the ocean currents are going to be affected if the ocean currents are affected rainfall is going to be impacted and you and you never know where the rain is going to fall exactly because of the changes in the ocean currents then come to the glaciers glaciers melt then you have more river f uh, more water flowing into the rivers but if there is so much uh, glacier uh, melting then it could lead to flood sudden flood you know uh, outbursts, lake outbursts or s things like that they call it. And so uh, it can impact different ways. So glacier, the impact of glacier will be different. The impact of uh, uh, sea ice will be different. But definitely it's going to impact the water cycle, no doubt. He, he's right in saying that if there is more evaporation, definitely there is going to be more rain. But you never know where the rainfall are uh, going to fall, the rain is going to fall. For example, uh, we are always seeing the impact of that. Uh, in fact, uh, we have experienced that, we have seen that there is so much rain somewhere that because of which there is flood or even the far, uh, I mean crops are being destroyed because there is so much rain. So it's not that we need so much rain, mm. we need good rain good. at the good right way. time, at the right place. That's what we need. And so it doesn't necessarily, more evaporation doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to have good rain. So it will increase rain, but then uh, it, it may not be helpful for us. Right. Yeah. So I'll take a few more questions. Uh, Piyush, who is a class 9th student and he is asking about how climate change will affect the normal water cycle. And the second question has been asked by Faye and she is asking about will it affect rainfall also? So yes. kind of. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting again. Yeah, that's true that uh, climate change, uh, how it's going to impact the normal water cycle. What is water cycle? If we look into that, it's a simple like evaporation, then evaporation, the water vapor condensing and it's uh, falling again uh, uh, on the earth in the different forms like snow or rain, you know. So this is a cycle that's going on and uh, from where does evaporation takes pla take place? Evaporation takes place from oceans, from water bodies, lakes, rivers, from transpiration of plants, from respiration, animal respiration or human respiration, perspiration also, so evaporation happens and but what's happening now is that how climate change is going to impact is that as we have said several times now that more increase in temperature it's going to be, uh, melting uh, is going to be more, y you know, and so uh, I mean evaporation is going to be more. But again, as I said earlier, evaporation, more evaporation, more rainfall do not necessarily mean that we are going to have uh, uh, a good, I mean, that's not going to be a good rainfall for us, not going to be beneficial. But definitely it's going to impact because uh, the snow is going to melt more, the glaciers are going to melt more, sea ice is going to melt more. And when it melts more than the, wa the whole water cycle, I it's going to be impacted, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, even uh, related to our topic, I was reading few of the articles and I got to know about a term permafrost. So what exactly is that? Yes, permafrost is again some uh, a word that is very closely connected with climate change. And so permafrost sim uh, simply let's say that it's a frozen ground, you know. And since it's a frozen ground, it's not purely ice, uh, purely water. It's a uh, mix of soil, sand, rocks and water. And so it's a uh, frozen water underground. And most important uh, factor of permafrost is that when it thaws, it, uh, the word thaw is used for permafrost. Mm -hmm. We don't normally use melting because it doesn't really melt, it thaws. And so when it thaws, the organic uh, matter that is inside the soil, then now it decomposes and it releases uh, uh, carbon in the form of methane. Methane, as we all know, is a, uh, it's a greenhouse gas. Mm. And so it's going to impact, uh, increase climate change. And so raising temperature, rising temperature is going to increase thawing of permafrost. Mm -hmm. Thawing of permafrost is going to give out a lot of uh, methane, which is going to, again, increase at, uh, global warming, global you know. Warming. And so it's a kind of cycle again. Mm -hmm. And so we are just feeling it's a, a positive feedback loop that, uh, that's happening. So more temperature, more thawing. More thawing means there, there's going to be more carbon in the atmosphere. More carbon means again more temperature, more rise in temperature. And so the cycle goes on. Right. So here I'll take up the last question of uh, Lokesh who is a class 10th student. And he's asking about the strategies to deal with the pro uh, problem of climate change to uh, stop the change in the forms of water. 
Yeah, there are several strategies, and the strategies are manifold and at different levels. For example, at the international level, we are familiar with the word Paris Agreement, where the countries are trying its best to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emission. That's mm -hmm. one part. At the national level, the government of India is doing a lot by trying to produce more energy in the form of uh, from renewable sources, for example, solar or wind or e even nuclear. And so that's what the government is doing. Or it is also distributing a lot of LED bulbs so that energy consumption will be reduced. At community and individual le level, there are so many things that we can do. For example, judicious use of energy, uh, turn off the lights whenever you don't require it, or you can carpool, or you can take public transportation, or you can consume locally available food so that if you're consuming something that's coming from far away, that means that uh, s the food has used some amount of energy in its transportation. And so uh, we can consume more locally available uh, food. And also then we can try to avoid excess use of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. don't accumulate stuff. Don't buy too much stuff if you don't need it. So there are so many things at the community level, individual level, government level, international level that can be done. So those are just a few strategies that I have just mentioned. Right. So today we clearly understood about the effect of climate change on the various forms of water and we also understood few terms like the difference between the sea ice, icebergs and permafrost. And for all this information, thank you so much Dr. Shimre. Thank you. Further, if you have any query or any suggestion regarding our any program, then you can dial into our toll free number or can drop an email to us. Moreover, you can send your question along with your selfie and video selfie on our WhatsApp number which is flashing on your screen. And the number is 8076-75446. And with this, I am Shilpa signing off. Till then, take care and keep watching Kishore Manch.